vetting committee has worked many, many hours uh, interviewing, sending out questionnaires, uh, doing the vetting process that we have, and we, we pride ourselves in having the most transparent vetting process out there. Uh, when we started our vetting process a couple years ago, we came up with the, uh, the idea of putting everything online uh, so you as voters, if you didn't like maybe what we were what we were saying, can you hear me now? No. No. Not really. It's got to be up to your mouth. <coughs> It is up to <laughs> What you do, John? You have to. Anyway, so what we did, we, we put everything on our usvotesmart.com website. That includes the questionnaires that we send out to each an individual, one of the candidates running for each position. And then we interviewed most all the candidates with over an hour interview, and that's all video. And we did that with each candidate. And obviously, we didn't put it up on the website until it would be tonight. So no one got a preview on, on the other candidate. So anyway, that will be available tonight. <laughs> Hold it for you, Bob. I think I can talk to him enough. you got to pay the bill, Bob. Where you It's coming in. Oh, the tape. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Hold the tape. Lower, Larry. You want me to talk? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> process that the voting that the vetting committee did. Uh, John works the head of the vetting committee. We'll start that off. And then uh, Ken, Ken Bond, which is the chairman of our board, uh, will they'll be back and forth going over each of the candidates that we vetted. Uh, as far as we have some people wanting to pay dues tonight, and, and we my daddy always told me never turn down money. <laughs> Uh, however, we're not accepting dues for the 2016 year until our next meeting, which will be Monday, two weeks from now. Uh, there will be some changes that we'll announce at that time, so we're, we're not able to, to take any memberships tonight, but we sure want you to come back in two weeks and, and sign up, and we'd love to have you. Uh, tonight, uh, as I said, we, we have a vetting process, and, and it's very transparent, and one of the transparencies is that our voting members, the ones who paid dues and have been active in 2015, will have the opportunity, they'll be handed a ballot tonight, to vote uh, on accepting our recommendations. And then after that is counted, and then it will be open uh, to the press and to the public. And so that's kind of our process. So uh, now I'd like to go ahead and, and let the candidates start out. Why don't we start over on this side? Introduce yourself, what position you're running for, and we'll do it as fast as you can. All right. Brent Webster, I'm running for the Court of Criminal Appeals, place five, and I'll stick around if anybody wants to talk to me about my race afterwards. I'm Greg and Reed, I'm running for Precinct Chair 50. James Nowak, I am your current commissioner of Montgomery County Precinct 3 and look forward to serving four more years. Rowdy Hayden, Constable Precinct 4. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Eva Guzman. I have the great privilege of serving you on the Supreme Court of Texas. I have been on the court since 2009. I'm running for re-election. I have a website, evaguzman.com. I would appreciate your vote, your support, and your presence. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Kate Shipman-Bim, candidate for judge of the Ninth District Court. I'm uh, Judge Mike Seiler, and I'm the judge of the 435th District Court, and I'm running for re-election. I'm Eric Yalek. I'm running for the 9th District Court in the March 1st Republican primary, and I'd like to ask you for your vote, please. 
and I'm Jenny Lambert. I'm your elected county attorney uh, in my first term and up for re-election, so I sure would appreciate your support and vote. Thank you. You're running again? <laughs> <laughs> Tim Hayes, candidate for Constable, Montgomery County Precinct 4. Steve Toth, um, former Texas State Representative running for Congressional District 8. I'm Jeremy Robin. I'm here on Sorry. I'm here on behalf of my wife, Jennifer Robin. She's running for the 410th uh, District Court. Um, she wasn't able to make it tonight. She's got a pre prior speaking engagement. She was that's not going to be time. My name is Michael Massingale. I'm a judge serving on the first court of appeals based in Houston. I'm running for the Texas Supreme Court, place three. I'm not running against Justice Guzman. I am not running against Rick Reed. I'm running as a constitutional conservative to replace a judicial activist in place three. I'm Ivan Fiel, and I'm a candidate for Constable Precinct 4 in the Hi, I'm Tim Napolitano. I'm the Chief of Police of the City of Montgomery, and I'm running for Sheriff of Montgomery County. Anyone else? I'm Dan <coughs> My name is Tom Moss. I'm here representing oh. Rick Green, running for Texas Supreme Court, place 5. Pick Rick. <laughs> no. I'm Tom Brewer, and I'm running for, running for Judge of the Anyone else? All right. Good try. Oh, working good. Okay, without uh, any further ado, I want to introduce our vetting chairman, John Woods. Right Thanks, Larry, and thank you for everybody for coming out. Happy New Year's. Um, I want to ask him, uh, Vaughn, to come on up and join me. Uh, he was pretty integral, and he also has uh, my notes here for me, so I can follow along. But he's going to be doing this presentation with me. Uh, we really would like to thank um, all the candidates for participating. Uh, we, it, it was an arduous process for us. Um, I, I think somewhere over 2,000 man hours, uh, you know, between eight people, probably a lot more. I hadn't done the calendar over the last week. I heard there was a Christmas uh, day and a, and a New Year's Day. I think I missed those. But uh, before I go into our committee, if you want to bring those up, John, to the next slide. Uh, I do want to thank my lovely wife back at the back. Uh, she did uh, help me out tremendously, fed me, uh, kept me on track. I did have to do my own laundry. I did have to clean the bathrooms, but other than that, uh, she did a great job helping me out. Um, so I mentioned Ken um, up here, and I'll go into that uh, shortly. I uh, also want to recognize Bob Bagley, who is right here. running the uh, slideshow. No. Just, oh, you're doing the slideshow. Yes, he's doing the camera. He's taking on the computer. Uh, Brian Crumby, uh, who led us use his office uh, and was instrumental in our interviews as well as Bob uh, Dale Fessenden <coughs> right here same thing probing questions uh, during our face-to-face our -face interview as well as developing the questionnaires um, Larry Rogers who you guys just met who was up here a second ago our vice president Pat Tibbs and Dennis Tibbs are out of the country right now and of course Ken Vaughn um, let me let me just say a word about Ken. Um, what you're going to see, see on the slideshow um, is part and parcel of what you'll see on usvotesmart.com when we turn that on tonight, as soon as we can get home to do that. Um, but without these guys, all these guys, um, it, this would have been totally impossible to do what we do. Uh, Larry says we're the most transparent. I think we're the most thorough, too, as well. And I think probably most of the candidates will agree with that uh, from that standpoint, for the ones that we had a chance to interview. I know some of you are here that we didn't get a chance because um, we were up against the November 3rd election. We actually got started before that, um, you know, in, the, in this process, just for the March 1st primary. So unfortunately, uh, we, we were unable to probably um, interview, we did interview all the local candidates, we didn't get to the state candidates that we would have liked to. But with that said, let's move along here. Uh, next slide. 
<clears throat> okay, uh, there are some Republican Party precinct chairs. There's five contested precinct chair races out of 90, I believe. And since I'm running for one of those, I'll turn it over to Ken and he can announce those candidates. Right, there are actually four of them actually have NCTP members running in them. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the first one. Uh, precinct chair 13, and each one of these, and we show it kind of district maps, so you get a sense of where they're running and if you may affect you. But we have Brian Plumby, who is over here somewhere, um, is uh, running against Brian Christ. Uh, he's one of our board members, so obviously we're selecting him. Uh, that is kind of the southeast of Magnolia area. Uh, the next one is Precinct 23. Uh, this is up north, uh, kind of north of Willis. And uh, this is uh, the one race where we don't have MCTP member running. But there's Scott Baker and Doug Rentz, and we took a poll among us and we decided uh, that Scott Baker was going to pick there. Uh, Precinct 50. Uh, this is Reagan Reed's, Reed's district over here on the left. Uh, who's taking a snapshot of it right now and probably Twittering it or something, tweeting it, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is kind of the west side of Willis, and um, he's running against uh, Gary Pinson. Uh, and then uh, there's John Wirtz, as you see right here on the stage with me. He's running against uh, Patricia Truesdale. Uh, that is, um, so if you zoom in there, you can see that that is kind of the 242 and 1488 area on the west side of 242. Uh, the next one is on the east side of 242. That's Chair uh, 75, Precinct uh, 75. And that's Larry Rogers, who is yes, there, uh, running against uh, Daryl Linder. So. Uh, so those are the five precinct chairs, fairly small districts, but now we'll move on to the more exciting races. I thought that was pretty exciting, right? <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's behind the vetting research? Um, with regards to the candidates, uh, we sent all the candidates a questionnaire. Um, we, we actually, for those of you who are not familiar with our process, we use Google Docs, Google Docs to develop our questions. And then actually we score them. And then after we finish scoring them, we rank and sort them and take the top 15 to 25 questions and send them out to the candidates. And the candidates in each race get the same questionnaire. So everything is consistent at that point, okay? And then once we get that questionnaire back, then we offer an interview uh, upon completion of that, um, and only upon completion of that, so that we can record a one-hour interview. Uh, there's also other candidate and uh, independent research that goes on. We've had a number of volunteers come out and, and uh, help out from that standpoint. Um, they they want to remain anonymous and, and we will do so from that standpoint. They were invaluable, especially in the statewide judge races, uh, as well as uh, even some of the local judge races too as well. Um, the vetting scope uh, the numbers, I think whoever got the email today, if you're a candidate or a member, uh, you got this form here. And uh, the numbers are 31 Republican races monitored. There's 19 contested races, 57 contested <coughs> candidates monitored, plus eight presidential, 54 still active, plus eight presidential, and 46 of the 54 responded to questionnaire with one pending. And we conducted 34 interviews, uh, plus we had two presentations uh, at meetings. Uh, Mr. Judge Matt and uh, Rick Green. Uh, there are nine Democrat races logged on the website. Uh, we did not pursue those. We did not really have time. Um, we did do a revamped website. Um, from what we had last year, we had it on Wikipedia. And then Ken found a new uh, 
platform uh, to do it that just about killed me on loading that thing up with information, but uh, next year he assures me, or next go around, uh, instead of you filling out the questionnaires and sending it in, that in and we taking that information and plugging it in, you know, to, to the platform we have now, we're going to send you a link and you can type in your own data right there and then in right into the database. Right? Yeah. Okay, just confirmation. <laughs> What's cool about this is that you can go in and just like if you went into uh, any of your county websites, or probably most of them can, uh, and then enter your address and a zip code, and it filters out all the other races that only pertains to you, just like when you go to vote in the voting machine. So pretty slow. Uh, the vetting rating system, okay, each candidate scored on a scale of zero to 100, with 100 being the best. It's just, you know, great score, scoring. The final score represents an average of scores from each vetting committee member that you were introduced to here just a little while ago. The endorsement requires an average score of at least 80, and you'll see on the screens coming up a little gold star there. And then we also, once they hit 80, decide whether or not that person, that committee member wants to endorse that <coughs> candidate. And at that point, 75% um, or more of the vetting committee uh, has to endorse them. Next. Vetting process, uh, the results are recommended to the MCTP membership, which is tonight. And the results only become official 60% or more of the MCTP membership present at the meeting approves. And you have to have been a member prior to tonight <coughs> to vote tonight, as, as Larry indicated. Okay, uh, the membership requirements, other than paying dues, is that you have to have attended uh, or participated in four events in the prior six months uh, to now. So that, that is typically the requirement that we have, and uh, that will afford you a ballot. Okay, the vetting, let's see. Okay, on uh, vetting documentation, we'll call it. All data is recorded on the web. We're looking at it from the standpoint of education first. Uh, we supply the questionnaire answers, as well as questionnaire. Uh, the interview, any presentations, and any debate videos. And then we also research and put up assertions up there, and those are basically uh, what we conclude are the pros and cons for those particular races. And this will be available at usvotesmart.com. What you're going to see here tonight is an abbreviated version of what we're going to turn on later on after this meeting, you know, if, if it's approved by membership, and then we turn it on to the public, and then we'll also do a press release. There will be, if anything new comes in, we reserve the right to update that based on that information, and it will be researched. I can't tell you how much information we have come in over the last two, two days, much less the last two hours. And it's like, hold the phone, you know, all this has to be investigated first. And we do, we look, we ask both sides to weigh in on it before we um, put anything up on the website. There is a link from our primary website, mctparty.org. I know that's kind of confusing, but if you go to mctparty.org, there is a link there that will take you to U.S. Votes Mark. Or you can just go to U.S. Votes Mark. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is what VoteSmart looks like. Um, it's kind of the landing page, if you will. And it has all the races that are listed, from the statewide races up top to the president, and then you get down into the local races. And then we uh, show it on here, but let's see. Go back here. John. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. 
All right, there is Congressional District 8, in case uh, you're looking for that, Steve. <laughs> okay, next page. Yes, All right, so this is, uh, when you start drilling down into, like, you know, the individual races, this would be president. Um, this actually looks a little different than what you're going to see. Um, and so, but this is kind of the overview page, and we will have the candidates listed there, and we're going to have the results of our voting from that standpoint. Uh, yep, shows the jurisdiction map um, for what we're voting on. Uh, this is not a national election. This is a statewide election, national, for U.S. President. Okay, so you flip over the next page, and um, not that we're leaning one way or the other, this is just an example. <laughs> but um, basically, this is what we're going to have here. Uh, we're going to have videos where that big dark spot is. We're going to have pros and cons, and then the questionnaire is going to be below that. And then on the right, you can see a bio of, of where, uh, for the candidate. Okay, on the right, next slide, results. Uh, here's the following slides are going to identify the jurisdiction for the race, as Ken just mentioned, proposed ratings for each candidate, the proposed recommendation, and a brief explanation of recommendation. Hold that slide right there. Ken's going to go over each of the races, and uh, then we'll, um, if you have any questions as we go through, let us know, but we're going to try to go through these as quickly as we can. We have a, a lot of races that cover the night team, and quite a few candidates <coughs> within those races. Right, and each night team, we did actually do a lot of thorough review here, as opposed to the precinct chairs, we just kind of pick because there's a lot of membership was really worth us trying to explain why we're you know, a member in order to give us our reasoning anyway. Right? Here we have a much less of a bias uh, that affects us. So we uh, analyze each race individually and we give our explanation. Um, now, if you actually go to US Vote Smart, you'll actually see a much more detailed, maybe not tonight, but the next couple of days, much more detailed description, pros and cons of each candidate who we vetted. But this is a summary kind of at the race level of why we made the choice that we did. So, uh, with that, with the first uh, candidate, oh, there you go. So, U.S. Votes Mark does have complete details. Um, and the next slide, yes. Uh, so, Constable Precinct 1, we're picking Ike Fluellen, which I think was here somewhere. There he is. Um, see that the, the jurisdiction, we're talking about the northern portion of Montgomery County, uh, quite a large area. Um, he was a, a fairly significant uh, margin of, of uh, victory here that we, uh, with us, but you'll see that we kind of have it color-coded as well. So um, he received a score of 91, uh, Kim Franklin received a score of 81, and remember everything above 80 is, what is the requirement to receive an endorsement. But not only do you have to have that score, you also have to have enough the, the uh, vetting committee supporting you for the endorsement. And of course, there's someone higher, so we pick Ike Flewellen. But this just kind of shows you that there are multiple people in some of these races that are very good candidates. We'd love to see one again, perhaps at a future date. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, with that, uh, why did we pick him? Uh, let's have to stand back then. Concerns about the current operation, the, the precinct in Precinct 1, uh, we did hear a lot of concerns about the number of backlog uh, way, uh, papers to be served. The, the primary job of the constable in Texas is to serve papers on behalf of the Justice of Peace. That's their mission number one. And we're hearing very big concerns about the backlog of these papers to be served. Um, so, so in yeah. precinct one, this was a very big concern. 
Uh, I presented some great ideas of how to solve that, and I actually spoke with him. Uh, the top two candidates there, that's what made them the top two candidates. Uh, also, some of the morale issues related to that. Um, in particular, uh, I did a really good job of explaining his um, uh, constitutional beliefs and his respect for the primary mission of the job, and that's what really uh, I think did it for us. He's also an outsider, given all the morale issues and everything, we thought that would be a good idea. And then, um, and the reason, you know, Generally speaking, we're going to skip through a lot of the middle tier candidates, but anyone who's scoring below 70, we thought we kind of did an explanation why they're that one as well. And our concern with Rusty was he really tied himself to the current administration and saying everything is going to continue the way it is. Well, we're hearing these concerns, that didn't sit real well with us. So, precinct two. Precinct two, you'll see there on the map, uh, this is kind of the central part County, including the city of Camara, uh, and there are two candidates that um, did not complete our questionnaire. And you know what? When you're running for elected office and you don't answer the people asking you simple questions, I mean, these are questions we're just posting online. That's completely separate from our recommendation process. We understand you may not recognize our recommendation, but you should, you should at least answer our questions. And if you don't answer our questions, we're going to hold that against you because, quite frankly, you saw we had like 85 percent of all candidates answer our questionnaire. And what we've discovered by these analysis in the past, not all of them, but a significant percentage of them have something to hide. One of the questions we asked is: there, Is there anything in your history that would be embarrassing if if it got out when you were running for office? So, if they're not answering our questionnaire, we have to start wondering, well, are they not answering because of this reason, right? So that's going to really hurt them on our story. It doesn't mean they're bad people or anything. It means we don't know. They didn't answer our questionnaire. Um, now with that, as an example of one of the concerns we found out, was we found out that one of these candidates that did not answer our questionnaire uh, apparently was dismissed uh, back in 2004. Sorry, an incident took place in 2004 he was discharged from the force, and that dismissal was upheld in 2006. Now, once again, I'd be really interested in asking him what happened with that, what was his side of the story, but he didn't answer our questionnaire, therefore our policies meant we couldn't bring him in for questioning or, or interview. So, once again, this is a big thing hanging over, which hurts his brain. Um, at the other side, Gene, uh, scored quite well. He uh, received a score of 88. We respect the limited role of constable. He has a proven efficient operation, so he gained our enforcement. Precinct 4. Uh, precinct 3 does not, uh, is not contested, so it's not in our list right here. It's uncontested with the incumbent. Uh, precinct 4, uh, we, this is the east side of the county. Uh, we are endorsing Rowdy Payton. Uh, there are two really good candidates here. Um, Rowdy simply, primarily, is the proven efficient operation. If it's not broken, he really has to try to fix it, right? Um, plus, he's, he's only been in office for eight years. I mean, maybe one thing to say, well, he's been there for 30 years or something. It's time for new blood. He's only been there for eight years. So he's doing a good job. He's been there for a really reasonably short time. And actually, he scored slightly higher, partially because of his experience. So, um, also notably, he testified for Steve Toth's uh, uh, HB 1076, uh, which was, I believe, on uh, firearms, right? So, so it, he's well respected. That's why he got an endorsement. Once again, nothing against Tim Hayes, who's also a good candidate. Uh, going on precinct five. This is uh, right southwestern part of the county over the Magnolia area. Um, none of the candidates really impressed us that much. Uh, in this particular race, we had two candidates that were quite reasonable. We're not concerned about particularly at all. And then the incumbent, uh, who's been there a very long time, uh, was it 34 years, uh, and he promised not to run this time around at the last cycle. Uh, and we've heard some morale issues, some other things. 
So it, it's time for David Hill, we believe, to go. One of the other two candidates, either one would be reasonable. We kind of have concerns about both of them. Nothing huge. Plaque seems to want to grow the department beyond just serving Kekor's role. And then uh, Gatewood, his primary, ex primary experience was with military police, not the civilian police forces. So um, those are the two concerns with those. Great people, no problem with them, but um, then it just really over, over the process. So that deals with all of the precinct level type races. Moving up a notch, sorry, there's one more precinct to go through, but I'm sure uh, no actor's about ready to put out. <laughs> we'll, we'll do all the, the law enforcement first, though. Um, and with the sheriff, uh, we have, we're endorsing Jim Napolitano, and this is a county wide race. Uh, Napolitano advantages, um, uh, primarily he's an outsider. Once again, we've heard some real concerns about some of the uh, uh, existing relationships within the existing departments. Um, so an outsider we thought would be really good. He seemed to be quite visionary in, in the interview. We encourage you to take a look at that online. Um, also, he has a lot of federal background law enforcement, which as we move into this age of terrorism, particularly with everything you see happening in the Middle East right now, I, that seems to be a good thing to have on local staff. Um, he's also very God-centric. Um, there were some concerns with Peach. Uh, that Napolitano might be a little bit more tempted to yield to the feds, not only given his past relationships, but some of the same <coughs> answers. Um, and then Henderson is part of the establishment kind of structure and uh, have some concerns over current operations. So bottom line is we ended up opting for Napolitano with a really good score, score of 89, and, uh, but Henderson even got a score of 77. So it's not like we're out for any of these people, it's just how we play the game. Now we get to the last precinct, <laughs> precinct three. Uh, precinct one is also up for the cycle, but it's an uncontested election in the primary, so we did not spend any time evaluating it. Precinct three, which is primarily kind of the Woodlands area, South and County, um, the incumbent is uh, James Nowak, and he has only been in office since 2012, so he's not like a long-term incumbent, he's fairly new. And his time in office, his record's been pretty good. Um, not perfect, there's been some concerns out there, but all in all, it's been pretty good. Uh, and um, we were concerned about him voting for a raise and lack of discretions at times, but overall, very good candidate that has supported uh, our, our goals and, most importantly, initiated the uh, South County Mobility Plan, which was a huge, uh, hugely needed for our county. Um, you know, if we can only get that done at the county level, <laughs> that'd be great. Um, the other person running, Sanders, did not respond to our questionnaire. Once again, that obviously hurt him. And as near as we can tell, and there's not even a whole lot of information on his website, um, primarily just some pictures, primarily with establishment type candidates like national figures, Rick Perry and, and uh, George Bush and Jeb Bush and, and others. Uh, I might go off on a couple of those. but. I, those are the, or Huckabee was, was the other big one. So, anyway, um, 